while in the spirit. Time is foolish, you know. Time is nothing. Then is now. Then is now. Then is not anymore. What was is now. And what is to be is now. There's no such thing as time. Don't you understand? There's no time, no past, no future. It's all now. Understand? These things are not now presently for you to know, for you must first pass through a long, dark tunnel before you reach the other side, where you will be given light to understand these things. Thank you, Lord. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. against 
God's children during the coming worldwide devilish dictatorship of the Antichrist's regime, which will war on God's saints throughout three and a half years of a reign of terror called in the Bible the Great Tribulation. Multitudes of us will still be here to joyously welcome Christ's triumphant re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. He's the only one who can stop us, and he'll stop us then, for a little while, to take us home for a party, the wedding feast of the Lamb in heaven. Then we'll come back here and stop them. So praise the Lord, beloved. Don't feel defeated, don't get discouraged, and don't worry. No matter what they do, they can never stop us completely, ever. As Martin Luther said, we will not fear, for God hath willed his truth to triumph through us. We can't fail, Lord, because you're on our side. It's impossible for us to fail, Lord, because you are with us, and there will always be thy family somewhere in the world, a witness right up to the end, according to thy word. Praise God. They can never stop us, but the day is coming when we will stop them. Thank you, Jesus.
talking about Jesus. What do we do for others? What's the duty of every Christian? To witness, to be a testimony, to preach the gospel of Jesus' love, right? Our main business and God's whole plan is that we get the whole message out. Our family was built on the word and our faithfulness in proclaiming it. We will never stop witnessing, even if we have to whisper in their ears and secretly pass them letters or notes, or secretly have them meet with our little families in our homes to study the Bible, as they do in many homes in Russia and many other places in the world today. And as long as we keep talking about the Lord, somebody is going to listen, whether they receive him or not. There will always be hungry souls, thirsty for our water, hungry for our nourishment, eager for our love and help. So we're going to keep right on going and preaching the gospel and loving and wooing and winning souls to Christ wherever we go, in whatever way we can, until death do us part. Hallelujah. We we cannot deny you, Jesus. We cannot deny the truth. So help us to stand fast, loyal, faithful, and diligent. And help us, Lord, never to stop. Never to stop loving you. Never to stop talking about you. And never to stop loving others, Lord. Into thy kingdom. In Jesus' name.
wife. When God told Lot and his family to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah before its destruction, he told them that they shouldn't even look back. Not only not to go back, not to even want to go back, but not to even look back. In other words, to look back was a sign, as far as the Lord was concerned, that they were sorry that they had to leave. But Lot's wife looked back anyway and immediately turned into a pillar of salt stuck in the mud of Sodom and Gomorrah, hard as a rock and totally immovable. Thus shall it be with all them that turn back and look back upon that which was and desire the former things which shall be no more. For no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back for the kingdom of God. Forget, therefore, those things which are behind, and reach forward to the things which are before. Thou must press forward for the prize of the high calling of me, which is in my Son, Christ Jesus. So look not back, for the former things shall be no more, but look up, for thy redemption draweth nigh, that shall be forever and forever and forever. Have patience, faith, determination, and perseverance unto the end, so that you may receive that crown of life.
Scott'll do the rest. He will do what we can't. When Jesus went to raise Lazarus from the dead, he told the people, Roll ye away the stone. He could have made Lazarus walk right through the stone, so why did they have to roll it away? Rolling the stone away from the door was something they could do. They couldn't raise him from the dead, but they could roll the stone away. God's not always going to do it for you when you can do it for yourself. He said to Moses, What is that in thine hand? He usually lets you do what you can do, and he does what you can't do. Jesus said, Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, and ye shall receive. If you don't go around looking, you're not going to find. Maybe all nine doors are shut, and you're only going to find one open. But are you just going to sit there and say, Lord, reveal to me? No. God expects you to put feet to your prayers, get out and do a little hoofing and look. And if you know you are doing your best to please and obey him, God will do almost anything for you. Some of the most amazing things you could possibly imagine. So... Help us, Lord, to do our part and obey. Then we know that you will do the rest. Thank you, Lord. such as was not since the beginning of the world. The world is going into the dark ages of anti-Christ, anti-God savagery. In fact, the Bible predicts that in these last days of man-made regimes on earth, a totally godless anti-Christ world government will arise, led by a devil-possessed dictator, Satan incarnate, who will bring a false peace on earth and a counterfeit utopia, and its price will be enforced worship of himself as the imitation Messiah. His idea will be to abolish all other religions and unite the world in one big one-world religion of the one-world government of the one-world dictator, the worship of himself, the Antichrist, the devil in the flesh. This will bring on the world's greatest trials and tribulations it has ever known as they try to wipe out the prophets of God and his children. But God is going to get his greatest victory out of the seeming greatest of all defeats. The rule and reign of the Antichrist is going to look like the eventual and final triumph of man without God. But then, when it looks like we're going to be really wiped out, the Lord is going to return and wipe them out. A happy ending to the story. Praise God.
Bible is pretty heavy, pretty strong, pretty deep. Read it and you will find a constant and continual greater and greater revelation of more and more truth. In fact, you'll find that the Bible is such an enormous study and so fascinating and so deep and so broad that it is as waters to swim in. So dive in and swim. Revel in the depths of his word, the refreshing water of the word that will feed your soul, strengthen your body, renew your mind, lift your spirit, encourage your heart, and purify your whole being. Help us, Lord Jesus, to read all the things your King David said about thy laws and thy word and thy precepts. He lived in them night and day. Help us also, Lord, to stay in the Word of God, grounded in the Word. You should be so hungry for the pure milk of the Word that like a newborn baby, you should devour it and drink it in, the pure, sincere milk of the Word. Like the old saying about health, you are what you eat, Physically, you are what you read, spiritually. So be sure you're getting your right spiritual food, the good, wholesome, nourishing, upbuilding, uplifting, encouraging, inspiring, feeding truth of the Word of God. God will bless you as you soak in His Word. going to be so damn self-righteous and holier than thou and hypocritical as to think you're holier than somebody because they have sinned against you, but oh no, you've not sinned, therefore you're not going to forgive them, then you're the biggest sinner of all. And if you have self-righteous feelings of being better than they are and look down upon them like the Pharisee who said, I thank thee, O oh God, that I am not as this man, then that holier-than-thou self-righteous attitude in itself is the worst sin. In fact, self-righteousness is one of the greatest sins of all. So help us, Lord, to be forgiving and patient, and to have mercy as we want mercy, and to treat others in their errors as we want you to treat us in ours. We should take a kind, loving, sympathetic, and forgiving attitude toward them, and try to help them with lots of understanding, love, and patience. We must forgive those who've wronged us, and seek forgiveness of those we've wronged, and take them by the hand back into our circle of love and fellowship in happy, joyful labors and pleasures together. Amen. May we all be more humble, more patient, more loving, more kind, more forgiving, and more long-suffering with each other, Lord. And may we sincerely pray, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. <laughs> 